Welcome to The Determined Mom Show, the only marketing podcast dedicated to guiding mom CEOs into tranquility, wealth, and multiplying those precious moments. Welcome to this episode of The Determined Mom Show. I am your host, Amanda Tento, and I have the lovely Sandy Schwartz with me, and she is the author of Finding Eco Happiness, Fun Nature Activities to Help Your Kids Feel Happier and Calmer. And today, we are going to talk about how to include a nature routine into your work and family life. So welcome, Sandy. Hi, it's great to be here. Yeah, I'm very excited that you're here, and I know that you do a lot of different really cool things. So you're a very unique guest for us. We have not had anyone that's an expert in basically like eco happiness or nature or anything like that. So I'm really excited that you're here. Before we get started talking about how to do this, tell us about you and how you got started in doing what you're doing. Yeah, I'll have to take you back to high school when I was in high school. And I think it was 10th grade. And I was part of, it was called a nature defense club. And we went and cleaned up a dirty, uh, polluted local river. And that was really a very jolting experience for me that really changed my life. And I went on, uh, I continued to be involved in the environmental club at school and taught recycling to younger kids, wrote my college essay on that cleanup, went to college as an environmental studies major, and then went on to get a graduate degree in government with an environmental policy focus. And so I've been a long-term, long-time environmentalist. And I really, my goal is to save the planet, which is a really lot of, a lot of weight on one's shoulders to, to live like that. But but then on the, in the parallel to that, like the parallel trajectory, it was my, my own personal struggles with stress and anxiety. And that was really, I can go back to being a young child and having upset stomach and the sweaty palms and nerves in math class or birthday parties. And, and it really it was, it happened to college. And then it really came to a head actually when I was going through infertility, which I imagine many of your listeners probably have dealt with themselves. So I was going through infertility, which is very stressful and anxiety provoking. And, and then even what I discovered later was postpartum anxiety, which I didn't even know was a thing. And, you know, the panic attacks started, the real worries. And I think a lot of that had to do with the lack of sleep as well as a new mom. I need my eight hours or I don't function. So it really triggered a lot of anxiety. And I went down a path, a journey to figure out what can I do that did not just involve taking medication because I really wanted to try to heal without naturally. And so you started to really delve into the world of positive psychology and it's tools that we hear about every day, like mindfulness and gratitude practice, healthy diet, exercise, and then nature, it all came together. Like my appreciation and love and care for the environment, I realized that it could also really serve as a medicine to me and to many others. And so that's why I decided to really be a writer and I really wanted to dive in deep to this topic. There's a lot of amazing new research about how nature can benefit our health and happiness. So that is why I coined the term eco-happiness and wrote the book and I have a website and I really just want to share the information because there's a youth mental health crisis and really all of us. Uh, And this idea came before the pandemic, so it's even more pertinent now. (laughs) That's awesome. That's an awesome story. And I love that you took something that happened to you in high school and just ran with it. And really, I think it's very unique to find like that thing that you're so passionate about so early. I love it. Yes. And it wasn't like something I learned at home or, you know, it just really was almost like a meant to be moment in my life. And I don't even remember why I joined the nature defense club. It could have been, but my friend at the time did it, but it really did open my eyes to to my passion. And then my passion for writing came late. I wish I had majored in English. Yeah. <laughs> But I did major in environmental studies and I do, I remember taking some really great English classes in college as well. Yeah. You have the best of both worlds and you can write, you've obviously written a book, you're an accomplished author and you still have all of the, the scholarly background in the eco science. So I think it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And I just think a lot of people need 
A lot of people are looking for a way to manage, to stay balanced, right? Oh my goodness. Yes. That's like my life's mission is to figure that out. And I'm always like not figuring it out. So I'm really excited that you're here to talk it's about this. It's not an easy task to do. We all struggle with it every day. <laughs> yeah. So the first question that I have for you is what in the heck is a nature routine? What is it? So we, I equate it to, okay, you have to brush your teeth every day and we just do that. We know we have to do it. We know we're going to, I go to the dentist twice a year. It's just like part of what we have to do. And then you've also heard about, we need to exercise. Why do we need to exercise? We're getting this input from health professionals, exercise, get up and move around, healthy diet, drink enough water. It can become overwhelming. <laughs> Mindfulness. It's really, to me, mindfulness, and I've done a lot of research and reading about mindfulness because it seem, at first it seems overwhelming and complicated, but it's really just stopping and being in the moment. And so I took something like mindfulness. I have a whole chapter in my book and it, it, I start with the basics of mindfulness, basic research, why it's beneficial. And then I look at it through a nature lens and I wanted to provide all this information of how to be mindful with nature outside, even inside, just looking at a plant or even on your, on the TV or on your computer. I love watching those quick videos of a flower blooming. You know, it's like a fast pace of something that happens in 48 hours or something that is so awe-inspiring. And so even if this isn't just about immersing yourself out in the woods for days at a time, it's by taking, it's taking a couple of minutes here and there throughout your day and building in that nature routine. So I say it, I'm coupling it, right? Like they're already telling us, the experts are saying, be mindful, take a break, get, and if you're going to have to get up from your desk anyway, why don't you go outside or at least look out the window? So it's bringing that nature piece into our other routines that we know help us feel healthier and happier. Yeah. I love that. I think that's awesome. It makes total sense now that you say it, but it's just when you, it's just a foreign term. It's not something yeah. like nature and routine. They don't necessarily go together in a, like in our everyday American fast paced, like crazy, like just trying to get everything done and everyone fed kind of lives. At least that's how I feel like my life is mm -hmm. sometimes or every time all day, every day. But anyway, yeah. So that's a very interesting take on it. I love it. And I think that we could all benefit from that. So how do we do it? Like how I'll give you an, a, like a rundown of my day. Right. And you can tell me like when I can do this. So I get up, <laughs> I'm just giving you a little test here. You I get up a lot of kids. So yeah. it's a little difficult. <laughs> exactly. I get up and like, basically from six 30 to eight, I'm getting kids like ready and off to school. And then at eight is probably, I'm thinking maybe when I have time to do it, but that's when I like eat breakfast and drink my coffee and mm -hmm. kind of check in like my email and all that stuff. And then I go right into meetings, like sometimes as early as eight 30. And then my day is all day, like meetings working. And then I pick up my oldest daughter at two 45. The other ones get off the bus at four and then the rest is like homework and dinner. It's just, that's my whole day. Okay. You're going to be shocked to hear how <laughs> simple this is. Okay. The first thing is, do you, do you drive the kids to school or at least some of them? One of them. Yeah. Okay. So I once wrote this article. It was really cool. I tend to get very, I get, I'm very impatient. I'm working on my patience and I hate wasting time. To me, one of the worst things is sitting at a red traffic light. And I one time did this piece all about being mindful. This had nothing to do really with nature, but it gives you the sense of you're at a red light, like how can you actually turn that red light, which is so like anxiety provoking and negative, turn it into a positive, like it's a green light to be mindful for that minute that you're sitting there. And instead of letting, you know, your blood pressure go up, now you bring the nature in, you look around for the trees, the flowers, the clouds. And then the best thing is you do that with your kid yeah. so that they're learning this skill. And instead of, and look, it, it's not something you may do every day, but those days that you're feeling a little bit more rushed and stressed and you keep hitting those lights, instead of getting mad, it's like, we have to tell ourselves, no, let's just try to at least appreciate something. And it's a lot, it gives us more benefits. It's more beneficial if we're looking at 
nature. If yeah. you're, not, you're not going to sit there and go, oh, I appreciate that building. Mm -hmm. You know, that the study, the research <laughs> really shows <laughs> what a difference it is when you're looking at a brick building and you're looking at a tree. Yeah. It are, we are animals at the end of the day. Like we have an innate need and to be connected to nature. That's this living inside all day long and not getting outside is not what we were like made for. So yeah. we now need to take those moments. So that's one really simple trick. That's awesome. I can do yep. that. I can do that. <laughs> the other thing I was going to say even earlier was food. It's interesting. I know I have a whole entire chapter on food and some people might be like, what does food have to do with nature? But food, real food, right? Whole foods is nature. So mm -hmm. something as simple as a mindful eating practice at breakfast or at dinner with the kids. If Let's say you decide to serve grapefruit before dinner. My mom used to do that yeah. <laughs> all the time. And just taking that one, or you have the grapefruit, you talk, you look at the color, you discuss the color, you take a whiff of it, you smell it. It's such, such a very soothing fragrance, citrus. Yeah. And then you take that one juicy bite and you just savor it. And even if you just do it like for a couple of minutes, as you begin your meal, that in itself is connecting again, mindfully to nature too. And then it might spur conversation like, Oh, yeah. how are these grown? Or maybe we should start a garden. Or if you have, a, if you do have a garden and you're eating the tomatoes in your salad, you can talk about that. And yeah. So again, it's, you're already like eating. You're already, you're going to the grocery store. You can bring these conversations in as well. Mm. I love that. Awesome. That's so simple. It's just, I think, okay, for me, I have a tendency to overcomplicate things, especially like I have anxiety, OCD, ADHD, like all of these things. So like my mind is always just making things as complicated as possible. And you're just saying, no, just like literally look at the tree, look at a tree. That's it. That's it. It's so awesome. Yeah, that's the beauty of nature. And that's what is so fascinating about the research in the last couple of decades, because cultures and traditions for hundreds, thousands of years have known this. And as we became more industrialized, we moved farther and farther away from it. And it's literally just getting back to the basics, to mm -hmm. our roots and doing these simple things. And that's what mindfulness is. Like mindfulness doesn't mean you have to go to that 90 minute yoga class. Yeah. I personally, I can't stand those long yoga classes. I, I want like a 30 minute yoga class. Yeah. <laughs> just enough to like have a, a touch of it. Not everybody, you know, is going to sit and meditate for that long. Yeah. And they actually say, the experts have found like a little bit sprinkled throughout your day. You're with meditation is the same thing with nature. Yeah. It, it's almost better to have a little bit every day than going on that two hour high Sunday afternoon. Yeah. That's awesome. So another question that I have is, so in the thinking of a nature routine, is it good to also try if I'm going to try to do something with my family? Like, should I be trying to aim towards something more like that rather than like movie or like bounce? I don't know. What do they call those bounce place? Like the trampoline park or whatever, like any of those things. Is it better? They're still like the trampoline park is still physical activity. However, like it's not necessarily the same, right? What are the difference in those benefits? Yes. So there's a whole area of research on green exercise specifically, which I found fascinating. So yes, you're going to, so here's an example of running or, or, or walking. I don't run, but power walking. So you can do it inside in a treadmill in a windowless environment. Okay. Staring at a wall, you are going to get some benefit. You're going to get those health benefits, but if you have a view of the, of a, of the window, if, the, if the, you buy a window and it's a beautiful scene, you're going to get more benefits. And if you go outside for that walk or run, now you're really getting a lot of benefits and it's utilizing your time more efficiently too. And it doesn't mean every single day you have to go outside. This, the research shows that it was very recent. A big study came out in 2019 that getting 120 minutes per week outdoors is really where you want to be. So that's about 20 minutes a day. And so let's say half the week you're, and that's what I do a lot. I try to go on my outdoor walks, but I've been playing pickleball sometimes inside, sometimes outside. I've been using my stationary bike on a rainy day. I'll do inside. 
but I do have a nice view of the window. So it's really, again, it's all about balance, but know that you will definitely get more bene health benefits and emotional benefits if you are exercising outside for sure. And yeah, we want to bring that into our kids' decisions as well, especially because they're growing up in a time when A, the schools are locked down, which is a whole nother issue and topic. They, they there's security issues. So they're, they go outside, but you know, it depends where you live, but that's the whole thing. And then the technology just rings them. It keeps them inside more and more because they're staring at their screens. That and is I very say, true. E even take them out, let them be on their screens outside. At least they're breathing in the fresh air. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. If you're going to be on it, you got to go sit outside. I like that. Yeah. We've done a lot of, we've made a lot of effort of trying to make, actually, that was the first thing that we worked on in our house. Like when we bought our house, cause it's like mm -hmm. a 122 year old house. So oh. we made a lot of effort on making the outside space as nice as possible as quickly as possible instead of working on the inside now we're on the inside but there's still just that like having a space that's like peaceful and quiet and just outside is really important so that is something that we have which is good yeah and having family meals outside more having if the kids are reading or doing art or even homework seeing if they can go out in the back patio people who live in apartment buildings hopefully some of them also have balconies or maybe a community spot where they can get be on some grass to enjoy it's really a matter of utilizing what you have it could be maybe you don't have it you don't have a balcony you're in a, a high rise but maybe there's a local library that has some sort of balcony or mm -hmm. a local park with a bench a table. It's really just, again, bringing it into our routine. And that just sometimes means exploring a little bit deeper than we usually do. Yeah. Ooh, I love that. This is so full of amazing tips that I think we're all going to have to start. At least I will do it myself. So I will start incorporating this starting today and try to incorporate these little bits, especially with the kids. And they love being outside. I know I definitely need to push more of that as well. It might be fun since you have so many kids to have each one take a week of a month or something that, to pick one activity to do outside in nature. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. Awesome. And I have a checklist too. If people just feel like overwhelmed, like, well, where do I begin? Where do I start? I have a free checklist on my website on the homepage that you can download. It's like a, a 30 day calendar of nature activities. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. I'm printing that as soon as we're done this recording. Yeah. So we'll have a link to that in the show notes. So then that way everyone can access that and also your book. So then that way they can get that. And is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience as far as why this is something that they need to start yesterday? Yeah, because I keep reading more and more about stress and anxiety and what can we do about it? And to me, I feel this is a toolkit. I'll hold it up if this ends up being a video. This there's this is a toolkit inside. And you know, again, like one chapter is on mindfulness. Another one is on gratitude. We hear a lot about before we go to bed at night, picking three things we're grateful for. So I do that, I give you tons of activities on how to do that to be grateful for nature and be creative with that. There's a whole chapter on creativity. There's so many ways that we can be creative and can get involved with art that has to do with nature from a nature poetry walk to making nature mandalas to again, just sitting on a balcony and drawing or taking nature photos. And the kids can do that too. Again, I'm not opposed to technology. You go on a walk or in the backyard, wherever the kids can take pictures and then see what they can do on Canva with it or power on um, PowerPoint. My daughter's 10 and she knows how to use Canva. If Canva is a graphic design, a free graphic design program, if you're not familiar with it, she can take these images. She's made like slideshows to music and it can create little TV programs about, you know, you can turn it into a news report, right? About nature and what we saw today on our walk. The ideas are endless. Food with gardening and mindful eating, animals. And that's the other thing that I like to tell people is, Start with what you already love, what each child already loves. So one child might be really into sports, so they can focus on that outdoor time. Another might be more into art. Start with what you love, what each child loves, and then go from there and continue to challenge yourself. And next thing you'll be on an eco-tourism adventure. <laughs> I love it. I love those ideas. I have one that like loves to draw, one that loves like to touch bugs and 
Ooh. trees and like literally at the bus stop this morning she was just touching the drop of water on the end of each evergreen tree oh. like leaf and just like letting it run down her finger and she was just like fascinated by that Amazing. so it's just so funny like how different they are but I can see if I did a little bit of organizing and that kind of thing like how I can incorporate that into something fun for everyone and it will keep them busy so less work for you <laughs> yeah exactly that's very true I could send them in the backyard and say, okay, whoever takes the best nature photo with their phone is going to win a prize or something. That would be awesome. <laughs> I'll give the little one my phone and that'd be awesome. Great. There's actually an app where you can take like a picture of a flower or a tree and it'll tell you the exact species of it. And so that's really amazing. I and mean, that can keep the kids busy for hours. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Awesome. I so appreciate you being here and sharing this message with us. It's much needed. And I think you are an angel for evangelizing this very needed message and trying to get us all out of our anxious kind of states of life. So I truly appreciate you being here. Thank you. And I truly believe that when we're calmer and happier, it's a kinder world for all of us. And we all get along and we want our kids to grow up like that. So yeah. And then it's being kinder and happier to the planet too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That might be another episode. <laughs> See about that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Sandy. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Yes. Let's face it. Piecing together a marketing plan with the things you hear, watch, or read online, while tempting, is never a good idea. The truth is people don't search on social media for your services. And even if they do, they will still be going to Google to check your rating. By not having a cohesive, proven marketing system, you are leaking clients and customers through giant holes in your customer acquisition bucket. Let's talk about what else isn't working. Posting tirelessly on social media, tracking followers as a business metric for success, paying for ineffective marketing, buying glossy ads in Tucson Magazine, spending time replying to comments, paying others to manage your social media with no actual sales coming in. So what is going to work? Having a proven marketing system in place will plug every hole in your bucket and allows you to begin to fill up with new customers and to also retain and nurture your current ones. Go to tdm-marketing forward slash 6-marketing-musts and download our free guide to six marketing musts guaranteed to get you more customers.